while he's playing for you. Everybody, I feel the presence. I feel the presence moving in me. 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 I feel the grace. I feel the grace moving in me. Seaside. Boy, what a great crew you had with you there, Rebecca. You had Reverend Roby touching you down at Seaside before she leaves town to Colorado. Our is going to be singing with us a little bit later. And Mint, oh my goodness. Oh, how fabulous. My goodness. What joy. Happy New Year, everyone. Year. It's a wonderful to be back with you. I missed you last week. I was hanging out in sub zero weather for a week in Montana. And um, five days of straight snow had us snowed in on the top of our mountain for three days. It was crazy, running out of food, wondering, having neighbors call and see if they could bring us food. And then the snow plow finally got there. I mean, the first snow plow guy, his equipment can no longer take the snow off our quarter mile driveway in. Then uh, the guy who does the neighborhood says, no way, he's not touching. Finally found a neighbor with a bulldozer, came in, and he ran it off the road. We spent one day trying to get it out of the ditch for him. But it was exciting, creating family memories. And that's what we do at Seaside, is we create wonderful memories together. And so in 2015, it is going to be deep, it's going to be profound. We are going to create wonderful times together that will last in our heart and our soul forever. It is the place to be in 2015. I encourage you to bring your friends, the family, the kids, because that is a magnificent year where, where we're going to create an amazing life together. And the thing about Seaside is we always put spirit first, and that includes particularly on Sunday morning. So to take us to a deeper level here today is a wonderful practitioner by the name of Patty Christensen. I invite you to sit back in your chair, put your feet on the ground, and join me in a moment of silence. And with my very breath, I now come to the deep, deep knowing that there is only one, one power, one joy, one deep intelligence running through all, one source of everything that is and is coming into this new and glorious year. And I know that that spirit, that holy divine intelligence today has drawn exactly the right people here. The people who come today to be fed, to celebrate, to rejoice, to bring the deep questions in each one's heart. And so I affirm today is a beautiful, blessed, wonderful day in this new year. 
that everything is in divine and right and perfect order. The music, the singing, the words, the reading are all blessed. And it is so good. And I know that Dr. Reverend Christian shows up today a divine channel, listening, listening with the heart of divine and bringing forth exactly the right words, the words that are needed by each one here, that are part of our divine guidance, part of our divine knowing of this beautiful and wonderful day. And I know each person who gathers here today comes bringing their heart and receives exactly, exactly, exactly what they need, what each one needs in coming here today because it is a blessed and holy and beautiful and wondrous day. And as we come together, opening, opening, opening our hearts, we all affirm, and so it is. God is real God is magnificent God is light God is love I am real I am magnificent I am light, I am love. We are real, we are magnificent, we are light, we are Thank you, Rebecca Jade and Lynn Willard for playing and singing us in so beautifully. And our beautiful practitioner, Patty Christensen, for praying us in so beautifully. Thank you. Good morning. Good morning. I'm Reverend Christina Tillotson, and it's my honor to welcome you here to Seaside Center for Spiritual Living, especially if you're new to us here at Seaside or if or if you're new to this philosophy, this faith, and this way of life. If you're new, we have a, a packet for you that you can pick up in the back to show how much we appreciate you being here and sharing your light and your love with us here today. We're part of an organization called Centers for Spiritual Living in, in Golden, Colorado, and the mission is to to awaken humanity to its spiritual magnificence for a world that works for everyone. So if you can align with that, then you are in the absolute right place. And here at Seaside, we teach a philosophy called the science of mind. It takes all of the world's great religions, like Dr. Roger is going to be talking about on Thursday nights, and, and all of the great <clears throat> philosophies and science of the world and puts it together in a philosophy and a faith of the way of life that not only enhances our own lives, but allows us to create a world that works for everyone. So thank you so, so much for being here. And here, it's a, you feel the energy in this room today? This brand new year that we get to start out with all these classes. And, and if you're, whether you're 16 or 116 you, and you want to, to set, set your intentions for wellness for 2015, I invite you after the second service to come and meet with me in, in the Quimby room. We have so many things. And, and what I love about this time of year is that, that light and that love from the holidays just, just, just continues to up-level everything as we go into this new year. So thank you so much for being here. <clears throat> the reading I've chosen is from... Uh, the Essential Ernest Holmes by Jesse Jennings. Ernest Holmes is the founder of our philosophy, our faith, and our way of life. And I get to teach this, this class, The Essential Ernest, here when it comes around. And um, since I'm not teaching it on Tuesday, I'll be in Dr. Kathy's class. And if I weren't teaching on Thursdays, I'd be, be at Dr. Roger's class. Anyway, so there's what he says. 
There's a universal wholeness seeking expression through everything. We are calling it simply life. The religionist calls it God. The philosopher calls it reality. Life is infinite energy coupled with limitless creative imagination. It is the invisible essence and substance of every visible form. Its nature is goodness, truth, wisdom, and beauty, as well as energy and imagination. Our highest satisfaction comes from a sense of conscious union with this invisible life. All human endeavor is an attempt to get back to first principle, to find an inward wholeness that all sense of fear, doubt, and uncertainty vanishes. This thing itself, this reality, is within every individual which partakes of the nature of the universal wholeness and is so far as it operates is God. This is the meaning of the word Emmanuel, the meaning of the word Christ. There is that within us which partakes of the nature of the divine being. And once it partakes of the nature of the divine being, we are divine. In our ignorance, we try to find our center outside of the self. This can never be. The ancients said that God's center is everywhere and his circumference is nowhere. We are like the upward thrust of a wave. We look about among the other waves, apparently disassociated from us. But underneath is the oneness pushing all waves upward. There is one mover in every movement, one undulating passion for self-expression. So as we take these ideas into prayer, I'm trusting that as, we, as, as these ideas go into prayer, some questions for Dr. Christian will pop into your mind. So going into that place where I know there is that one reality, that one life that the philosophers call life, that, that, that some people call God, that, that the Taoists call the Tao, and the, in, in Judaism it's called Adonai. It doesn't matter what it's called. It could even be called the force. But it's that one power, that one presence, that one wisdom, that one light, that one love that flows through every single being, every single thing in this universe because it was created out of itself. From the tiniest atom to the farthest galaxy, it is all God, it is all light, it is all wisdom, it is all love. And that is who I am right here and right now and each beautiful spirit here is. That light, that wisdom, that divine energy of spirit right here and right now, sitting here at seaside and out, out in, the, in the world, connecting with us through the internet. It is all life. It is all God. And each one is that. And I am knowing for this sacred time together that that, that presence is absolutely palpable in the sacred time and place. And that every question that is asked to Dr. Christian is a question coming from that presence of God within each one. And that every answer that Dr. Christian has is that presence of God speaking as Dr. Christian. And that out of this sacred time together, everything that needs to be known is known. Everything that needs to be revealed is revealed as this time together not only uplifts each life here, but flows out into this world, into this universe, uplifting the consciousness of all beings for a world that works for everyone. And for this light, for this love, for this wisdom, for this sacred time together, I'm so, so, so grateful as I release this word to the law, knowing that it is now per done in perfect wisdom, grace, and love. And so it is. Amen. Good morning, Seaside. Well, it is my honor to introduce our guest artist for today. We're going to keep it short and sweet for her. She's down here to visit us from Agape. Please give a nice welcome to Miss Arne Batson. <laughs> okay. well, and friends. <laughs> Spread out a little bit. Happy 2015 Seaside. It's a pleasure to be here. It's a lot of beauty up on this stage. Let's give it up for the band. This is a song written 
by a dear friend of mine. Her name is Brenda Lee Ager. It's what got me through the drive this morning. We got Mint Arella, Reverend Roby Warren, Seaside Diva Rebecca J. Hey, Something woke me up this morning, this morning, this morning. Something woke me up this morning. It must have been, it had to be, I know it was the hand of the Lord. Come help me sing this song. Something woke me up this morning, this morning, this morning, this morning. This morning, Ooh, this morning, something woke me up. This morning, oh, it must have been, it must have been, had to be, it had to be. I know it was, I know it was, know it was the hand of the Lord. Hand. While I was sleeping, there was something that was, something that was keeping me. Something woke me up this morning, this morning. It must have been, it had to be. I know it was the hand of the Lord. sure glad you drove down from L.A. this morning and something woke you up, because it woke me up too. It woke all of us up, didn't it? Yeah. My goodness, it, uh, man, you should have just seen the smile on everybody's face this morning just listening to that song. That is just absolutely incredible. So, okay, um, beginning of the year we go back to the basics. In the next couple of weeks I'll be going through the first initial chapters of the book, The Science of Mind by Ernest Holmes, but usually, and like always actually, uh, the first Sunday that I'm around in January, I do the questions and answers. And hopefully you've got some questions. And even more hopefully, I, I, Spirit's got some answers that are going to come through me that might be able to uh, address those particular questions. So um, the, uh, what I would like to ask is that you have a question, you keep it sharp, 
No, not really storytelling at this point. That if you got a question, just kind of telescopic brevity. And I see a couple guys got mics. Thank you, Bill and David. I appreciate that. And so, got any questions? That uh, yes. <clears throat> Two guys that I think are pretty smart. Einstein, who thinks that um, his biggest question was, is the universe friendly? And Mark Twain, who thinks God just uh, looks at us as a form of entertainment. <laughs> Hear your teach love, wisdom, and light as many other religions. And I just am confused on to where the other things fall into creation and God. Other things being evil. the humor? Yeah. <laughs> or, or evil problems. Evil and problems. OK. Well. Um, we don't deny that there are some nasty things that go on out there in the world. And um, Ernest Holmes, he talks about evil being you know, the conscious use of these, uh, these spiritual principles for a, a negative kind of response. And so we don't deny that those things happen in this world of form. But what we, where we come from is that world of the absolute, which is pure spirit. There is not God and something else. And so the truth of our nature is spirit. There is nothing else that God could create from but itself, right? One plus nothing leaves one. God plus nothing leaves only God. So that is the absolute truth of our being, is pure spirit. And so as we walk through this world, if we can continue to walk in alignment with the spirit, there doesn't need to be the power of God over anything, because there is nothing in that God realm. And so in that God realm, there is not the evil. And so if there are, are things going on in this world in which we live and we're doing our human experience here, what is essential is that we continue to go back to the essence of our being where there is no otherness. There is only the absolute. That is the mystical connection. That is where you become the transparency and the mouthpiece for God to speak the truth. And what is unlike that truth will dissolve, it will dissipate, and it will no longer be. And so as we walk through this world, what is essential and what we work on here is coming into a greater, finer attunement and alignment with the truth of our being so we can walk through the valley of the shadow and fear no death. Or as Tom Costa, wonderful Dr. Tom Costa said, hey, do I walk through the valley of the shadow of death? I don't have to build a condo there. <laughs> and so you don't need to stay there. You recognize there's things going on in this world that are the nasties, and that's of this world but the truth of your being is not of this world. It is of the spiritual kingdom. And that it becomes my responsibility to bring that forth into the world. So the world in which I walk is a reflection of that higher expression. So thank you. Another question. Yes. I have a question on prayer. Okay. Um, before I started coming here, I would start my prayers off with, you know, I pray to the spirits of the universe and my guardian angels and it was praying to something else and since coming here i you know i i understand we are part of spirit and so these days when i'm praying sometimes i get really confused on am i praying right like i know we, you can pray however but i'm trying to be more aware of how i pray and i i don't know if i should be praying to something else if i am part of that. that is such a great question. You pray to something else, or are you spirit expressing? And the classes I teach on Tuesday nights start. I this will week. be there. You'll be there. That's great. Because <laughs> this is what we work on. And I want you to understand that is probably one of the most challenging hooks that one has because we have been brought up with the concept of praying to something outside of ourselves. Um, almost all the religions pray to. Allah, God, Yahweh, uh, the saints, uh, the, the sages, the, and all the ones, the, the angels, the guardians, and all those folks. And, you know, I think that's a beautiful thing to connect with that essence and that consciousness and that energy and that life force. And, and that is how, <coughs> excuse me, we've been taught to pray is to something outside, to be that intermediary. But what you were saying is absolutely, absolutely the truth. And that is what, let's say, a master teacher like Jesus said, he who sees me sees the one that sent me. You know, that, that is the essence. You want to recognize that there is spirit and nothing else, back to your thing. That's you. Why would God talk to someone to be an intermediary to talk to itself? It doesn't work that way. You are spirit. You're not all of God. I mean, you're not all of the infinite, but all that you are is of that infinite. And so what we work on in the classwork and with our meditations is coming into a greater alignment that my words begin to be that clear expression of spirit in what is going on. And so when we do our prayer work, 
we speak it from the highest place of our spiritual connection and understanding and leave the space for something even greater to show up in our world. You know, for this or something better, for the divine right action. So what we do through meditation and our connection and walking on the beach and walking in the woods or sailing your ship is coming to know that life force that is ineffable. You can't put it into words. So as soon as you begin to articulate, you, you, you bring it down, but you are working in this world of form and, and verbalization. And so you speak at the highest level, but not to anyone to go do your bidding because you're spirit. So what you're doing is you are dialing in to that finer frequency of your essence and allowing that to express in your life and your world. And so where one has been taught that you're no better than the worm of the dust, where they ever came up with that one, I don't know. But, you know, or I am not worthy to speak to God. You're, you're God. That You cannot be anything else. Einstein, or you do your math, or you're scientific. There cannot be anything else if we were talking about infinite. And all the great religions talk about the infinite. We talk about the absolute, that it is everything. And then how they can go sideways and say there's something else, I'm not quite sure. But what we do is take that premise and say, okay, if God is everything, then what I am is of that. And it is the heart, it is the essence, it is the feeling, it is the, that which is the good juju that makes that show up in your life. And you're not making anything happen. And that's another thing with prayer is, God, would you be an intermediary? You know, would you stop this war? If that kind of prayer would have worked, it would have worked by now. It, it hasn't worked. What works is people coming into alignment and being that light and being that essence. And when that spirit is flowing, anything unlike it cannot remain. So healing happens in the body. The finances just, boom, pour forth blessings in inconceivable amount of streams of, of revenue or good or blessings in your life. Your relationships get juicy and passionate and intimate and wonderful. That's what happens when you come into alignment with spirit. I no longer need to tell spirit what to do in my life through my prayer request, but rather I move into what Ernest Holmes talks about is the realization stage. I realize there is spirit. That's it. You know, there is spirit and there is nothing else. It's not spirit over anything. It's not the God power over a lesser power. My stick is bigger than your kind of stick or my God is bigger than your God. It is coming into alignment with spirit. And with that, that is what will guide my way. That is what will heal my life. That will guide me in the paths of fulfillment and success and enrichment and joy. And I'm not going to be looking towards retirement so I can catch my breath. I'm going to be getting turned on, and that flow and that life force is going to be moving through me, and anything on life get will be slipping out like Teflon pans. Like, boom, out it goes. Health and wholeness comes when you come into alignment with spirit and know that is who you are. So there is no one or thing outside of you that you need to speak to. What you want to do is become that conduit of its expression in your life. And you will find a source of energy that is so rich. Just It's exciting. And the only way you know that is to do it, is to try it. So thank you. And I'll see you on Tuesdays. Who else? Yeah. Go get her, Bill. Hi, I just recently started coming here and... Welcome. I had oh, a seat for you. you. <laughs> thank you. And it really fits me. It's just great. My question is, is when a loved one that you wish was experiencing the same thing that you are, um, and since I'm just learning, how do you not feel resentment to the loved one that doesn't experience the same thing you do. I know your teachings are to go within yourself. Right. Um, how, do you how do you suggest to practice that on a daily basis? The, the best approach to that, I feel, is to be this teaching, is to be the love, to be the kindness, be the caring, be the understanding. And one of the things that um, this philosophy believes is that there's many paths up the mountain, that this is not the only one. And so if somebody's taking another path and they're being a good person and they're being loving and they're being kind and, and their life is working, it's working for them. And I don't need to get them to switch over to my way. But what's important to me is that I come to recognize that spirit is love and that spirit is the joy and spirit is abundance and spirit is that first breath, first cause of all things. And I am of that and I'm working to be of that in a greater way within my life. And anything unlike that begins to just 
I don't know if it falls away. It just, it's not as dynamic in its interaction with my world. And sometimes I'm moved in, into a new path. Sometimes others are moved to a new path. Sometimes those around you will see what you're doing and say, wow, where's that restaurant of life you've been going to? You've just been getting served up some good nutrition. What, what is that? Tell me more. Show me. Let's, you know, let's read something together. I'll show up on Sunday with you or let's watch it online. And so I find the best thing that one can do for the loved ones around them is to be that loving, caring, passionate expression of life and not be a doormat to their, uh, to their perspectives because a lot of times the ridicule and the ostracization from a collective that is in a different perspective can feel like it, oh, it hurts. But recognize that this philosophy, the new thought philosophy, is the fastest growing social order in the, in the, in the U.S. That the cultural creatives list 50 million, and that was 10 years ago that Paul Ray did that whole thing. And, um, and so there is a new kind of spirituality that is not based upon historical things that may or may not have happened, but rather it is an interactive, socially active expression that is relevant for today that touches down right where you are and empowers you to be a spiritual leader. So often what others will do with their philosophies is give their power away to those that they're praying to outside. What this does is it has you find the power that is inside of you and just activates that and turns that on and asks you to go be that spiritual expression of love or spirit or light uh, wherever you are because you have been chosen for a time such as this. And this world needs more light than ever before. Not those that are controlled by someone or some philosophy, but those that are listening to a frequency of their own being that has been called into this world to express that light and empower those that are around them to step forth because what you bring is a new thought. The headlines and the news will profess this kind of perspective and the collective herd will follow this perspective and what you have been called to do is to bring a new thought, which is why we're calling this a new thought philosophy, is that there may be a different way to look at this here, guys, that I don't have to give my power away or I don't have to believe what the, the media outlet is pouring out or, or have you. And so the more you are who you are, those that relate to who you are will show up. Those who don't relate to who you are aren't going to be hanging with you. And uh, family is more than uh, just blood, you know. And so you want to find those that are cheering you on on your path, not trying to tear you down. And your path will lead to another turn and another piece. And so you got to listen to that and say yes. And the more you say yes to who you are, the more you will be. Mm -hmm. Who else has a question here? Hey, Nancy. Yes. Yes, Nancy, I just want to thank you for every morning along with your hubby Bill opening up the doors and being the greeter and ushers and logistical coordinators of the 9 a.m. service. I know you're here at 8 and anybody who wants to help out, you're, you're open to, but thank you're you welcome. very much. <laughs> yes, and I, well, it's our pleasure too. We really enjoy being here. And I also just want to point <laughs> out a healing. You know, we talk about healing, but Nancy, when <laughs> I left town in December, she had just been in a car accident, broken collarbones and aching body and here she is on the door hugging and greeting you with no longer any <laughs> breaks and so you're just a testimony to healing it's all because of prayer I know that um, the question I wanted to ask was you know we keep talking about um, that our life is a result of our thinking and beliefs and faith and that um, if we ha if we're having a problem we just have to look at ourselves and, and evaluate what's going on with us. How do we explain or address the issues um, such as the most recent one in, in France where the hostages were killed and you know all, all, all the explosions and all that sort of thing? How do we explain that? How do we uh, think about that? Wow, that's a, like a heavy question. <laughs> <laughs> if our thinking creates our reality, how do we explain what took place in France? That's, well, <clears throat> what's interesting for me with that, it, it, and I spent some time sitting with that, what I recognize is as it looks like an isolated incident in France, we had our 9-11. They're calling it France's 9-11. But Spain has had their terrorist attack. England has had their terrorist attack. And I'll assure you those in the, um, some of the Eastern countries feel some of our actions are, are um, 
less than gracious. Um, and so the experience itself for the individuals involved is horrific. It's terrible. It's sad. Loss of life. Uh, the propagation of fear is just, um, it, it's horrendous and a sad thing to see the families involved. And at the individual level, all those things are just gruesome and, um, and not good. But what we want to do sometimes is step a little further back and see what, what's, what could be going on here. And, um, and the fact that these attacks or these explosions or these terrorist kind of things happen around our planet from time to time, for me, has me asking, once we deal with, with the triage and the, and, and the immediacy of all those things I just mentioned, what is it that is going on that could make somebody hate you so much to act in such an evil kind of way to do such a Grecian kind of expression? And I find that is not a conversation that is really taken on in the public light. What is it that we have done that created somebody to want to do that? What am I doing that maybe I could take a look at that would have somebody respond in that kind of terroristic kind of way, that in such a, uh, a cowardice kind of way? What is it that is being exploited in other parts of the world that somebody needs to act in that kind of way to catch our attention because we can't sit down and have that kind of conversation. And others will say, but you couldn't have that kind of conversations because blah, blah. But what also is happening is a, a, a big understanding of a major global religion or philosophy on our planet that is called Islam that um, we did not know about. And to watch the imams coming out, I think it's a 2000, 2,200 different um, uh, places uh, where the imams came out and said, this is not... Uh, Islam that is acting, we are heartbroken that such terrorists would uh, ruin or take the name of Allah in vain and do this kind of action. It is no different than our radical Christian right doing uh, atrocious things in our country and other countries and calling it Christianity. And But what has happened is uh, we once believed in the jihad and Allah and killing and all that name. We're beginning to understand the passion, the compassion, and the love and the teachings of the Islamic faith that was never really known within our culture previously. And so we're watching a clash. We're ha watching global um, interactions and things that are going on between different religions, whether it is in France or whether it's between the Palestinians or the uh, uh, Israelis. There are things that are going on on our planet that are being brought to the forefront for the conversation and the understanding and the engagement in a way that otherwise would not have taken place. And so where the act is heinous, where the, um, the, uh, what is going on is sad, w watching the world unite together, and will, we resp will France respond in a way that is different than attack and kill and destroy, which oftentimes is the response to a terrorist kind of thing? Will there be a new thought and a new behavior that is responded with a caring and understanding and a love and a sense of peace? What can we do here rather than to go kill more people to make amends or try to even the score an eye for an eye leaves everybody blind and so what happens as we're watching the birth of a planetary family which we have never seen before or at least that we haven't been around this this time around to watch the birth of a global citizenship this is what it's looking like and birth is never a, a, a pretty kind of experience it's kind of messy you know, and what we're watching is a planetary citizenship that is happening. Whether we agree on it or not, we are globally connected in a way that we have not known heretofore. Whether it is through the finances, whether it is through the new sphere or, or the, the global brain or the internet connection, we are watching what is taking place and recognizing that we are one human family. And so when something takes place over in Paris, the heart aches and we are feeling as a global heart or a global family a, a pain that that 100 years ago would never have been known. So where there is a birth of a, almost a singularity of a, a planetary consciousness that is taking place here, and we are witnessing that, and it is easy to jump on the bandwagon and say, this is terrible, this is horrible, and the act is, but you know what? Maybe if we step a little further back, we're recognizing that we're coming to understand there are many paths up this mountain, and that the Islamic approach 
Judaism or the Hindu or the Jains or the religious scientists are all approaches if they are leading to an understanding of a loving, caring, compassionate um, God that is the first breath, first cause, the essence of all, all things. And those that are the fanaticals of whatever religion begin to pop off and realize that this is not the philosophy of one global heart. And so as you are willing to explore conversations and perspectives that are not the popular, you begin to see answers and understanding um, that will be fuel for your thoughts. And not saying that they are the answer, because I believe there are, there are many different slices of a pie that makes up the, the whole. That there's many different perspectives as you begin to explore possibilities outside of the one that is being spoon-fed to you. Um, and so these are opportunities for you to meditate on what could be different angles of understanding than what the media has for you. So those are some of the ways in which I, I approach it. So thank you for asking that. That took up all the last questions. So if you've got more questions, you're going to have to come back because it's going to be entirely different because I didn't. This is spirit moving through you guys, but I thank you for your questions. And um, it, it's always a, a great joy to be able to do that. Do, but, do we have time for one more question? Okay, one more question. I, I have a quick one. So what is our thrust here at Seaside for this year, our total goal and something that we want to align on? Last year it was love. And, and this year I'm very excited. It, it's about creating an amazing life for each and every one of us. And yes. I, 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 what I want so much for you is an amazing life this year. And that amazing life will be individualized by each and every one of you. An amazing life where there is an abundant cash flow for you, where you know a financial freedom, where that is not even your dynamic or your issue because what you came to this world to do is not to worry about your financial support. You came here with a purpose and a mission. And what I want so much for you in your amazing life is I was talking about being that conduit through which God flows there there's an energy, there's a vibrancy that heals, that transforms, that attracts to you everything that's necessary to make your dreams happen. But if you don't have the dream or the focus of that amazing life, how are you going to attract it to you? Oh, I'm here to be used by God. Well, that's great. Now start moving and be used by God. Get up off that meditation cushion and get into action so Spirit can deliver to you what it is you are here to do this year. An amazing life looks like joy. It looks like health. It looks like healing. It looks like happiness. It looks like being that light for others. And I'll tell you for Seaside what it looks like. It looks like all of our seats being filled here on Sunday mornings. It looks like a vibrant 20 to 30 year old group at Seaside that we're getting young this year. And it is because there is uh, so much in this world that, that is yet to find its way into Seaside that is good and that is a blessing for us all that we're opening our hearts and our arms and our souls for the gifts that God has. And so Seaside, who knows, maybe putting together a plan to to upgrade our building here, to put the upstairs on, to beautify it once again. There is just great deal of excitement uh, around 2015 because it is about you having an amazing life. And as you have an amazing life, Seaside is a representation of the collective. It's not me. It is a representation. You are its hands, its heart, and its feet. You hear me say that with every new member um, gathering that we have. I think when we have over 60 new members in 2014, actually sign the paper, stand up here, and, and become part of our family. Well, what I want is that everyone who is part of this family to have a life that is rocking in 2015 because as your world is working, so will Seaside's. And then Seaside will have an amazing life because you are. Love you. Thank All you. All right. Hey, let's keep it going as we bring our Nay back to the stage to touch our hearts, our souls, and our spirit with her amazing, amazing expression. That was beautiful. All right. This next selection was um, composed by one of my favorite people in the entire universe, Ricky Byers Beckwith. And I'm sending this to Reverend Fran. And I think you like it too. <laughs>
been fulfilled by you, fulfilled by you, oh God. And my search is over, and I rest in thee. to this moment every step i have taken has led me to this higher place everything that i have ever done has served me to see god's holy face and my destiny has been fulfilled by you Fulfilled by you, oh God, and my search is over, and I rest in thee. Past lives, they make no difference. Future lives, they don't concern me. My future and my past are rolling to this moment in God is eternal my life in God is eternal and I am free forevermore my search is over and I rest in thee I rest God's freedom song. This song is sung by the heavenly host. I rest in thee. I rest in thee. Something in me knew it all along. My life would be God's freedom song. This song is sung by the heavenly host. I rest in thee. I rest in thee. Cause something in me, hey, I knew it all along. My life is a melody. By the heavenly host, I rest in thee. I rest, I rest in thee. My destiny has been fulfilled by you, fulfilled by you, oh God, and my is over and I rest in thee I rest I rest mm -hmm. something in me knew it all along that my life is a melody of God Hey!
But that is our name. Oh, Yay. Woo. thank you. Arrestine. Yeah. That is wow. That is done so beautifully. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Well, this is the time of our service where we have the opportunity to unite together in our givingness and the sharing. And Seaside truly is a reflection of all of us uniting together. It is a reflection of our united consciousness. It is uh, supporting Spirit's work that shows up in our life as, as Seaside. And as you give, it comes back to you. It, it's not why you give, but rather it's an extension of your consciousness. It is the declaration of the activity that God is having in your life. So is God having an abundant expression? I mean, what is your statement for 2015? And so just listen to your heart and say yes to that and realize you cannot outgive God here or at any time in your life because you may give in one spot that represents spirit to you but don't forget that it's all god and you'll find your blessings coming back in those areas in your life that are right relevant and real for you try it you'll like it with that i'd like to invite your ushers forward and say thank you to this uh, wonderful crew and and uh, thank you to those that mail in your contributions when you cannot be here on a sunday it is greatly appreciated and also a big shout out to those that are part of our auto tithe program this year uh, through our pledge program. More people than ever said yes, count me in on that regular systematic support from my world into uh, seasides. And that regular support makes it a lot more comfortable for us to be able to function. And so with that, I share this prayer of gratitude with the most generous of spiritual communities, knowing that this truly is a blessed moment where the divine finds expression through our very experience. For we have become that conduit of the abundant flow of God, that we have said yes to being used by spirit in this moment, and we find that which has blessed and graced our individual life, and we take it and we send it forth back into action, knowing that that vibrational blessing continues to touch and grace all those with whom it comes in contact. Thank you, Father, Mother, God, for this opportunity to stop, to pause, to reflect, and be conscious in my giving knowing uh, the source is truly infinite, and so it is. Amen. And together, let us say this affirmation of abundance, which is, Spirit continues to bless my world. Gratefully, I live as the giving expression of Spirit, opening the floodgates of the affluent flow of greater good as my life now. And as I stand before this bountiful blessing that is ever expanding and growing and moving through each and every one of us, I know that has blessed and enriched our individual lives and that this wellspring is truly infinite and inexhaustible. And as we have given, we've come to recognize that as our true reality. And so as we share this in a collective way, it blesses and graces seaside and is received and handled in good stewardship and is put forth back into the wonderful vibrational expression of the abundant flow of life. Thank you, Father, Mother God, for this opportunity to pause, to listen, to remember, and to share that add blessings of life. And so it is. Amen. Amen. All right. That is Bill Siemens, your board president. 
And I know that he personally invites you to the annual meeting that he is throwing at the end of this month after the second service about one o'clock on the 25th of January. So plan to be here, find out all the particulars about your, your home, vote in your new board members. So, hey, guys, fabulous. Oh my goodness, way to rock the house. And speaking of rock in the house, Arne, what a gift you are to us. What a blessing. Arne was one of the first we booked this year in 2015. I know you're coming back a couple, yeah. You gave me a whole list and you were the first called. So bless you for that. And thank you for bringing Mint and, and Reverend Roby. I mean, what a gift. And even getting Rebecca to get up there and groove with you. We love that. Rebecca, you're a joy. You're a blessing to us. Amazing 2015 for you. Should have seen her. She sang to over 400 people at a sit-down event on New Year's Eve, a sold-out crowd. It was all over the internet. And it was just a, man, that's our girl. Yeah, go, Rebecca. <laughs> Dr. Christine, always a joy to share Sunday with you. Bless you. <laughs> Giving us sound in the back for another year. Yeah, thank you. Visuals are there by Marv. Good going. And so, flowers there. Been there a long time. <clears throat> But I'll tell you what, there is a lot of good going on in Seaside in 2015, and the classes this week is probably one of the most amazing week offerings of classes that Seaside has offered. I mean, Monday nights with Reverend Tammy and the power of prayer. Then you've got Tuesday nights. If you've never taken a science mind class or you want to know the foundations, Tuesday night, 6.30, I'm going to go over the 10 core concepts of, uh, of our philosophy over the next 10 weeks. I would love for you to be part of that. Sign up because we do work booklets, and it's... Just uh, love for you to be part of that. But if you've already done that with me, then we got Dr. Kathy Hearn doing her class that has a wonderful sign-up. So, I mean, what a week. And then to top it off, you heard about Dr. Roger and his wonderful class on religions. My goodness, it is an amazing class offering. And that I just encourage you to be part of that. It is going to be a powerful, powerful experience. Um, but I'll tell you what is powerful is prayer. And... Um, I'm going to pray, but before I pray, I just also want to um, acknowledge Cliff Durfee. We're having his memorial service here. He made his transition in October, and uh, we're doing that today at 3.30. So uh, loving practitioner of Seaside, bless your heart, Cliff. He was around from Terry Cole Whitaker days, and it's just uh, it, it's a big chunk out of, out of the heart here. So, And Reverend uh, Roby's leaving us, moving to Colorado. My goodness. Uh, Born and raised in Encinitas, her mom born and raised in Encinitas, her grandma born and raised in Encinitas. So uh, we'll take Betsy how long you're gone. But uh, <clears throat> we're going to miss you, that's for sure. Always appreciate you dropping in. So what I want to do right now is pray, and healing's the thrust of our movement. I see our kids standing outside. You guys can stand up here and wiggle and make noise and do all that. I'd love to ask you questions and things. But um, I'm going to pray. So right now, I want to invite any of our religious science practitioners to stand and just invite us all to feel this upliftment of energy and just feel that power and that presence and recognize it is the power, it is the presence. It is not the words. It is not anything outside. It is the very life force of being. It is the first breath. It is the first cause. It is the essence of all that is. And I am of that. I'm not all of it, but all that I am is of spirit. For I am spirit expressing in this moment the highest level of my understanding. And I pull forth the divine revelation and vision of wholeness in this very moment. Knowing that 2015 is a year that is an amazing life for each and every one of us. For every member and that is part of our spiritual community, there is such a, a, a residence that is going on that is blessings, that is grace, that is abundance, that is health, that is fulfillment, success. There is just a, a wonderful sense of being connected with Source this year. And it is in this connection that healing happens in our individual lives in ways that are relevant and real. For truly the blessings of God as it flows, it purges out anything unlike itself because it cannot remain in that divine emanation. Healing is the natural unfoldment of the presence of God. And I am grateful to stand as a witness to its unfoldment here in our individual lives in ways that are relevant. And if anyone here today is working on anything in particular, lift into this divine vibration, that divine ideal. Recognize that there is a challenge in the physical form in this world in which we're moving that has caught the attention, but it cannot remain in that divine light of God, that the natural resolution, the neutralizing of that is what is taking place in this moment. And God is having its way as your very life, and it is powerful, it is rich, it is blessed. It is an abundance of blessings that is the experience for each and every one of us in this amazing life in 2015. Grateful to know that Seaside is having a thriving year already, and it is just the seed of something greater yet to be. 
that it continues to do its work. It is a place where healing continues to go on. The prayer requests in our prayer request chest are answered. The practitioners that pray speak the words of God that there is just something powerfully good that is flowing here. And this flow is added to this emerging consciousness upon our planet of greater good. The world leaders are touched by something they know not of, but they feel it and they sense it. There's a healing that is going on in our planet. And for our brothers and sisters over in Paris and France, I know that there cannot be the emergence of, of a constriction of a fear, but rather there is the emergence of love and a greater sense of being together. And this is the impetus for the reaction and the responsiveness to what has taken place there in their world. Grateful to know that God is in charge, guiding it all. So I let go of my concern and my human perspective and open up to the divine knowing. And this I am grateful for. I'm grateful for the words they've spoken, that they're happening. I'm grateful for the wonderful expression of spirit. It's life that we know. And I let go to that. I trust that. I believe that in the divine right action of being. And so it is. Amen. There was a time in my life I thought I had to do it all for myself I didn't know the grace of God was sufficient I didn't know the love of God was at But now I can say, if you are discouraged, struggling just to make it through another day, you've got to let it go. And this is what you have to say. I release and I let go, I let the Spirit run my life, and my heart is open wide, yes I'm only here for God, so no more struggle, no more strife, with my faith I see the light, I am free in the Spirit, yes I'm is I'm awakening to an abundant year. Together, I am awakening to an abundant year. Again, I am awakening to an abundant year. Come on, like you mean it. Say it loud. I am awakening to an abundant year. And our song of grace. I'm living in love. I'm living in peace. I'm living my life for what I believe Through joys and through fears In this world I walk God's grace shines on me And it shines on us all We are living in grace We are living in grace United we stand as
as one family we honor all true as together we walk god's grace moves to me and it moves to us all we are living in grace we are living in grace 